So, we have just finished a fantastic day together with Peter Senge. And uh, I'm really happy and, and honored that you have accepted to be part of the Leading Complexity program this year. So, for those that don't know you, who are you? Ah, it, it seems like a simple question. Maybe it's not as simple as it seems. Well, I'm a, an American who gets to come to Sweden every once in a while. It's been probably, probably almost 10 years since I've been here. So, um, I've been at MIT for a very long time, um, and we've been involved in all kinds of ways to promote understanding interdependence and complexity and systems thinking, and what we all today now call systems awareness. Uh, so, that's been the thread, how people can really uh, operate, how organizations, how schools, how society ultimately can operate in a way where we're more in tune and effective with the extraordinary interdependence of the world. Great. And uh, since the program is very much about complexity, well, what is complexity for you? Well, we all know kind of what the, mean, the word typically means to most people, like, oh, <laughs> it's too complex for me. <laughs> and whether or not we say that, and of course when we're important people or we're in big positions, we rarely say, oh, I'm totally lost, but we feel that way. Uh, the technical definition of complexity in the system sciences is that in situations where causality is not simple, and the, the kind of phraseology in the MIT tradition I grew up in is cause and effect are no longer close in time and space. So like one billiard ball hitting another billiard ball, the causality is close in time and space. A complex system is exactly the opposite. Causality is neither close in time nor space. So, for example, raising our kids is inherently complex because the things we do today may have a big impact 20 years from now. And you might say as a teacher, same thing. Um, and and the, the, the space is really like, well, it's not just that person, my kid or that student, it's the life they live. So the, the, the impacts will not only be on that person, but through them radiating out into their whole life and all the people they touch. So. In that sense, you realize that complexity is not new. Ah. Living is complex. Yes, beautiful. Thank you for that. So, okay, so a lot of leaders, they are now facing complexity. So do you have any advice for them how to navigate in complexity? Well, first off, to appreciate some of our natural um, um, ways we, we make it hard for ourselves, our natural impediments. One, we think we have to understand. We all went through school. Most people who are in leadership positions were probably pretty successful in school. They've been pretty successful maybe in jobs that were simpler. And they carry with that a kind of implicit expectation that in order to be successful, I must understand what's going on. I have to figure it out. But if you just take what I said seriously, the cause and effect are no longer close in time and space, you'll never understand. So letting go of the belief that I should understand. You try to understand, you do your best, but you have to let yourself have a break, so to speak, because there's no rules for raising your kids. You can do everything right and it can turn out poorly. And you can make a lot of ridiculous mistakes, which most of us usually do, and on the whole, it turns out okay. So it's just, that's why I'm using that to illustrate. That's the nature of a complex system. It's not one where you push this button and this happens. Um, so the implication of that first is that you won't know. You don't know. And it's not because you're not smart enough. It's because it's not knowable. When people really get that, they relax a little. Doesn't mean you don't spend a lot of your time trying to understand. You know, I, I've been my whole life at universities, obviously. You're trying to understand. But to know the effort to understand will never produce complete knowing. That's another way to talk about what it means to live and effectively as a leader in complexity. Now, that said, you're often in circumstances where because of your position of authority, people expect you. It's not that you think you should, they think you should too. So you live in a very uh, conflictual world. And one of the things that I've, I've always been interested in is how different people kind of deal with that conflict. In other words, yes, I know that I, I can be my own worst enemy, but I think I've got to figure it out. 
but I'm surrounded by people who think I'm being paid to figure it out. And oh, by the way, some of the people paying me think I should be figured out. So I've got this kind of surrounding social circumstance, which I have to manage. I have to know how to navigate in that. Uh, I had a very good friend who eventually became the CEO of a very big company. And, and he had been there for 30 years or so. He, you know, he was lifelong aspiration to, to be in that job. He was really good at it. But he, he came in at an extremely difficult time. There had been a huge collapse. And uh, it wasn't just his fault, it just happened. You know, companies go through ups and downs. It was coming out. And everybody around him, including the board, and including, you know, tens of thousands of people, thought, Phil's gonna solve this problem. Phil, can you solve this problem? And he, his first speech he gave, he said, you know, this is a really challenging time. We've all lived through it. There's been a lot of pain, so acknowledging the pain, very important for leaders in this day and age to be able to kind of be empathic or empathetic with the circumstances around it. And then he said, and I really don't have the answer. He said that literally in his first big speech to his to place. And he said, I wasn't sure if I could say it, but I got close to it and I realized, no, that was the truth. I was being as honest as I could be. And these people deserve honesty. He said it was the most effective speech he ever gave as executive. But he said in the next two weeks, he got so many great ideas from so many people because they realized he was saying, I'm not gonna tell you what to do. We gotta figure this out together. And he said it invited so many people to take more responsibility. And it's not like that's the answer and you should always tell people you don't know, obviously that. It just, it would, in the moment, that was what was needed. So another way to say that is people who are really good at complexity or sensing how can I contribute best right here? What's the moment really need for me? And having let go of the, uh, the illusion that I should understand it all, figure it out all, which of course is often very egotistical, they're more able to really sense what's really needed now. And then, to the best of their abilities, be honest. Hmm. Wow, you're a great storyteller. Uh, And uh, that makes me look very much forward to your session that you will have. So thank you very much and looking forward to hear more from you. Thank you.